These gold and silver gears, like the inner workings of a clock, are the inspiration for these beauties. I'm going to create a full hand sculpting these inlays and some other surprises. Let's get started. So I have sculpted this full hand in these long, clear gel pointy nails for the platform for these gorgeous nails that we're going to do together. So I'm going to put my glasses on. Now I will just every now and then, I burnt my finger on a curling iron this morning, so I'm trying to stop it from blistering and it actually really hurts. So I have this little bag of ice that I'm just going to have to dip in over there <laughs> every few seconds just to calm the burn down because it really does hurt. I just picked this up at Michael's. And I'm really into these alcohol inks. They're really cool and I've got them in all sorts of different colors. And I picked all the brown colors because that's what we're gonna work with. They're very, very inky. Means they can get into anything so they can really get things dirty. And I probably have to add because it's gonna evaporate because it's got alcohol in it. I didn't wanna pour these ahead of time because they can evaporate pretty quick. It's kind of a wing it with all the colors. Not really even sure which color I'm going to ultimately use, but I want them all here for choices. They're quite a good selection. I just got these at Michael's. Oh, it's hot. Okay, so I'm going to use one of these Light Elegance gel brushes I got. I think these ones are both the same. And I'm going to make sure I use one just for the alcohol paints and the other one for building because this ink is so inky and liquidy, meaning it gets into every little crevice. So use it quite, you know, gingerly, sparingly. Just going to put a little alcohol in one side to clean that brush. So I'm just gonna make sure I have a little white pad and a clean me brush. And this stuff looks really cool. Watch this. So I'm just gonna get a little bit, I can't remember which color was which, but I'm just gonna start. See how liquidy it is? It's, it's like almost more liquidy than water, if that makes sense. So it'll run, if you put too much on the nail, it'll run possibly right into the cuticle and go into all the little dry areas and little crevices of your cuticle and it's hard to get it out. So I'm gonna make one of these, I think I'll do this one in sort of a French design. See that? Just going to paint that. This one might be too light for that part. So I'm gonna bring in some darker. See how it just spreads like that? Isn't that cool? Do you see that, Cameron? Very nice, I really like it. Yeah, it's really It's got a very organic look to it, actually, kind of like rust. Yeah. This color. I'm gonna paint like the whole nail. Careful of those cuticles, you don't want to flood it. I've done it and I didn't like the look of it at all. I'm gonna drain of that darker color and I'm going to put that lighter color over here. I just want to try to get a collection. See how it grades into each other? See how that kind of melds into each other? It creates a very, almost like a burnt kind of a look. I really like that. Let's try this little darker one over here. Really neat. Okay. Now this one, I think I'm going to I'm really testing those cuticles, make sure I don't flood it. I'm gonna make this one sort of like it's got a little almond in this part. I have to look at it this way. It doesn't have to be totally perfect because I'm gonna put some gears around it. Okay, and let's 
And let's not forget about the good old thumb. Maybe I'll do the thumb in a French as well. Do it in sort of a swoop French. One side's quite a bit higher. That's why I did these nails in a clear gel so we can see through when it's finished. So now I'm gonna try this one. This is sort of more, a bit more rust, which is definitely in the whole Edwardian. I guess the um, steampunk area isn't the Edwardian, is that right? I think you might know, Cameron. Oh, I don't know that at all, actually. Come on now, <laughs> a better guess. I could just say yes, but I don't know. I think it is. You might be dead right. I'm sure you are. Mm. So if you let it dry a little and then add some more, it looks very cool. Now I'm gonna do some lighter ones in there and maybe some of this copper burnt look. It's almost like a, a leathery kind of look too. Can I put some copper in this one to warm it up a little? Oops, I forgot my little rule about flooding the cuticle there. spreads. And if you're finding you want it to spread a little more, you could even take a little alcohol and dab it. See that? Even if it dries, it'll still work. And see how it gives those kind of burnt edges? Take just total alcohol and it just gives it that real, do you see that? Oh yeah, it's very nice. I really like it. It's very cool. It's almost good right on its own, you know? No. Yeah. This could be a short video. Wait till you see. This is just getting started. Look at that. Now, if I just want pure ink in there, might just have too much ink in me. Oh, that's good. Not happy with this one. Oh, it's getting better. Oh, you know what? The tip on here, I haven't really got the tip. It's kind of a beat up old leather kind of look, isn't it? Yeah. Distressed metal. But it's not metal color. Rusty metal. Ooh, I like it when it turns liney like that. See that? Yeah. I don't know if I'm drifting from that, you know, steampunk attitude, but it looks really cool. Dirty me towel. Yuck. Ruining my beautiful pink towel. Yeah. Oh, the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. That bites. Okay, I'm gonna bring in some more dark on this one. You're not overpainting it? Not of course I am. Already? I like I where there's do. a little bit of translucent light was going through it. If you paint it a lot, it won't be. Okay, go already I'll stop. Yes. Look at that, it's so cool. Let's get to the good stuff, the gears. Okay, I'm just gonna put this out of the way. Put these guys, I don't need these anymore. Now, but I do need these. Did you notice I haven't put my hand in the ice? Is it just that it feels better or is it that I'm just preoccupied with something much more important? I'm just gonna use a little bit of this fusion. It's called the clear base. And that is to help me attach the gears. I use one of these for the ink. Uh oh, I mixed them up. I think it's this one. So I'm gonna use this one for the clear gel so we don't make that mistake. Okay, look at these beauties. These are super tiny little pieces. And there's some big ones too. And I'm gonna layer them on top of each other. They're really thin and you can do that, which is great. See this big one here? 
it is normally flat, but I'm curving it a little bit so it'll fit on my nail because my nails are quite curved. You know, they're not a flat surface. So I'm going to get some of this clear. I think I'll put that bad boy right there. I'm going to put a bunch around here. So I'm going to cluster them all together, actually, especially around this French line. All the way down into here, I think. Now, where did he go? That one that I just... Oh, there he is. Now he's curved, so I'm gonna see if he'll fit right in there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Is he purposely curved like that? No, I did it. Oh. Remember? Because I knew it wouldn't fit very well. Right? Get it. Gotcha. They're normally, they come all flat, but our nails aren't flat. Mine in particular are quite curved. So I'm gonna pick up some others. Look at that, that looks like a a washer or something, eh? No, no, a gear. A gear. Yeah. Ooh, look at this one. Ooh. Oh, it's adorable. I don't know what this one is. It's kind of funky. I'm just going to stick it in there. Weird. It's sticking up a little bit. And they will because I'm getting down near the cuticle and it comes up like that. So naturally it's going to stick up a little bit. Yeah, I like that one. Okay. There's so many in here to choose from. Such a different, diverse selection. I don't know what this is, but I think that'll fit right there. Maybe there. Isn't that neat? My favorite ones. Oh, look at this little guy. Oh, isn't he cute? Definitely cute. Yeah, I like it. Oh, I love this far, far too much. I'm going to put one up here because my French line isn't perfect. What's a good one? Ooh. Oh, this one's interesting. <laughs> These are adorable. <gasps> look at this one. Oh, I think I have this one on there, but I think he's going to look good, right? Oh, I didn't really have enough gel there. There. See that? Keep going. I even like the one stuck in your skin there. <laughs> well, there's two. Yeah. Okay, let's build some along this line here. That's what I was trying to do is this line is going to sort of bring it down. I'm sure I got too much on there. I'm going to try to take some of that gel off. I am going to have to do another video on building the gel because when I was building these gels I learned so much more doing gel. I'm an expert in acrylic and when you work with acrylic you work with it on the fast side because you're trying to sculpt it before it hardens. But gel, not only can you take all the time that you want but you should and what I learned is the slower you do it the less bubbles you get on it because I did a build of gel and actually you were witness to it where I had too many bubbles in it I noticed. But this time I did it and they were so clear. I was very, very proud of myself. They were very cool. Oh, look at this one. Do I have this one in here? Nope. Look at this guy. Ooh, he's a big one. You might need to bend him, I think. I think he's going to have to be bent. Let's just do that. So what all I did was I just took it in my finger and I just wrapped it around. See that? Oh, this brush. That was easy. Yeah. As long as I don't drop it. Then you lose it and have to do it again. No, no, he's done. Right? Now I just gotta pick him up. And see that? Oh my goodness, he just fit like a glove. I'm gonna see, oopsie. And then I'm moving it. Oh. No, that's pretty good. Me gonna leave that. Okay. But I do wanna put some more.
he's gone. I'll put that in another one. Okay, so he's sticking up. I'm going to have to bend him too. For sure. They're long, so that makes sense to bend these guys. Okay. Would you mind if I just give it a bit of a nuke? Please do. Because we know I'm going to hit it, don't we? Yeah, I can wait 30 <gasps> seconds. Look at this one. I actually did hit it. Oh. Okay. Okay, it's going in now. Okay, it's in. Move my gel. 30 second cure. <laughs> Thought it saved me putting the graphic. Yeah. <laughs> That's, lazy. that's lazy, cameraman. Yeah. You put in that graphic. I like those graphics. Do you? Okay. Yes. I'm okay, a I'll very, put it in. I'm a visual person. So for me, even I could turn the sound off and just understand it with all the visuals. So to me, the graphic is really a nice addition. Don't you think? I like doing them. Yeah, they're pretty. So cute. I think I'm going to love this set. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm just going to go ahead and create some more. You know, one thing I do have here I'm going to put in is me little caviar beads. I've got two different colors of gold here. The more goldy gold, like an antique kind of gold and a brighter gold. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. Just We're just going to... Something else I've always noticed in the Edwardian steampunk, I looked it up on the internet, and they do bring in that burgundy kind of color. And I've got one of the beads here like it. It's a bit on the fuchsia side, but it is a bit burgundy. I might add a few of those. I'm gonna play with the thumb right now. I wanna use some of these big guys. The more you can put on there. I know a girl, her name is Chantelle. She works for Fusion and she puts everything in a steampunk nail. She says, everything. <laughs> everything? Yeah, just like every medium she could possibly think of. She just loads them in. So she doesn't stop just so you think she's done. She adds something else, which is funny. Okay, I'm gonna put that bad boy right there. This is the gel sticking to my finger. That's a big, thick thing to cover. It is, but it's so laying right. It's right in the arch of the nail, so I can build up and go a little higher. So that's a good point to put your inlays. I really like these gear things. I'm really partial to the circles. For some reason, I like the circles. And I like to overlap them. I'm going to put that guy right there. Look how cool that is when you overlap them. Come on now, you gotta admit that's yeah, that's really good. cool. Uh, I like it more of a chaotic kind of look. You want it to look like somebody just dropped a toolbox on your nails, right? I don't know if I would go saying that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think I like that explanation. <laughs> look at my nails. Somebody dropped something on it. Yeah. No. It's great. You don't know. That's. <laughs> I think it's good. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Makes it look like my workshop. I like it. Your workshop. Your workshop is like musical equipment. Okay, so if I dropped anything, it's going to be a box of glitter. Hmm? That's the only thing that I'm going to accept that you're going to drop. That's okay. going to look good on my yeah. nails. All right. Stupid box of tools. <laughs> Sorry. This is too adorable. Oh, it's awesome. I think it's one of our favorites, eh, Cameron? This could be one of the best sets of nails ever. Oh, that's because it's mechanical. Let me nuke it before I wreck it. Isn't it like nuke yourself before you wreck yourself? <laughs> yes. Okay, now I'm going to add some beads and see if I like it. If I hate it, we can take them out. It's not an, a loss, right? Always have a backup plan. Right. Good idea. That's one of the nice things about gel is that you can kind of change your mind. Yeah. 
right? Yeah, because acrylic, once it's in there, yeah, you, you got to file it all out again. A minute or two, so but you gel. Go. Should I take these off my skin? I guess there's no point. In... Well, I was liking them, but... Okay, let's try some little beads here. Let's see how well they blend in. You do like it. Well, I do. I do. I mean, it's kind of like... um. wasn't sure if you were going to, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, yes! Yes! It's awesome. Are you lucky you said yes? Because, like, even if you didn't like it, they are going in. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, uh, they had a nice touch. Just offsets the hard yeah. mechanical look. Yeah, I agree. I think I need a little beads up there. I'll try the lighter ones. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, mummy. That is cool. I always thought I would like to have been born in the Edwardian steampunk era until I had a toothache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm very grateful for modern inventions to relieve the pain of the toothache. So I wouldn't have fared very well back in the 1800s. It had been tough for me. I'm a bit of a baby that way. Okay. Well, I think this is looking just too, too adorable. That's an awesome thumb. It sure is. I love it. We've outdone ourselves, cameraman. Well, I didn't have anything to do with it. Well, you're Moral filming support. It. <laughs> you're, and this is how much I like the Edwardian style. Get a look at this. Look at this adorable little thing. Do you remember this, cameraman? Oh, yeah. Do you really remember it? I do. It was on our special day. <laughs> <laughs> no, that? he wasn't paid to say that. Look how adorable <laughs> this is. It's beautiful. See, I like it. What is it from, Caraman? There's a little test for you. It's from our wedding day. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, very good. Yeah. My dress was very similar to that, too. Very, like, this kind of off-white lace and kind of stuff. It was cute. Mm -hmm. It was cute. Well, it was... Beautiful is probably a better word. Well, no, it was probably more cute because... We were on a was, budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're poor kids. Yeah, kids. That's really, really cute. I don't think you've used that umbrella since, have you? Of course not. Is the is umbrella the proper ter term for it, or is there something else? Parasol? parasol? Yeah, maybe yeah. that's the word. I think it's parasol. Okay. particular about which gear that I want to pick out here. I like the little ones. <gasps> this one's cool. Look at that one. Really partial to those guys. You know what? I'm trying to stick with that. There's a diamond in there. Cat hairs too. <laughs> that darn cat. He's not even in the room. Critter. I saw the picture you put on Instagram. Oh, yeah. So He's so cute. cute there. Taking up my spot on the yeah. couch. <laughs> when I get up from the couch, like 10 seconds later, he's right where I was sitting. Yep. And I can't get him off. Well, no, you don't want to mess with Chris. Not without risking my life. Yeah, no, he will hurt you. <laughs> he's the boss. <laughs> yeah, he really is. He runs the house. Yep. And he knows it. I think so. Yeah. That's a possibility. Okay, I'm going to give that a bit of a nuke. He's watching me chow. You know, I had prepared some stamping. Not that I don't love my stamping, but I don't know if it's Nope, necessary. you don't need it. It's nope, nope, nope. I had a plan.
I really like the light ones. I'm glad I tried them. They just add quite a little sparkle, don't they? Oh yeah. I'm adding the antique ones too. Yeah, the antique's quite nice. Mm hmm You know, I'm really liking the color scheme too. I don't think I'm gonna add the red burgundy. Well, you know what, I'm gonna add it and show you. And then- Maybe you should nuke it and then you can just pop them off. Yeah. I don't know much about nails, but I do know about nuking them. Do you know what, do you know anything about lights? You know Battery what? dead, did you charge it? I forgot. Oh no. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put the beads on this one. That was a good nuke. What are we gonna do about that now? I'm gonna just gonna do it on another nail. Oh, it is pretty. <gasps> oh, that is gorgeous. I'll let you run the call on that one. I don't know about that. No, I think I'm just going to keep it all in one color, even though those are gorgeous. You have to be very judicious about where to put them in. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a whole bunch more in. And then cameraman's going to go get me another light. <laughs> going to add some beads to the pinky and I'm almost done. I've learned I'm an acrylic artist and you're always trying to get fast time because you want to make sure you sculpt and shape before it cures but with gel you don't have to hurry and with gel you should never hurry the slower you move the gel loves it because I've learned the less padding and fussing you do, the less bubbles there are. And of course, we are always trying to avoid bubbles. Now, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to cure that particular finger. Did you ruin Fortunate, it? No. <laughs> Fortunately, wow. I went over so nice and smooth, it didn't ruin it at all. Well, wow, so you don't just, have to cure it, but it's well, you should. risky. Yeah, you absolutely should. Because I could have moved everybody out of position there and I would have been really upset. Because I specifically put them in those areas. So I'm just going to give that one a bit of a nuke right now. Because I just want to hold it in place, okay? Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. So just take it nice and slow. If you're an acrylic person, you are used to that hurrying before it cures. But with gel, of course, we don't have to do that. But move very slow because the more movement, the more bubbles. And of course, with a design like this, I don't want any bubbles. So I'm really learning a lot about gel. I've worked with a bit of gel over the years, but not with all the different viscosities they got now. They've really got a lot more viscosities, which makes it flow a lot differently. And I want to make it clear, I know what I'm doing as far as build goes. When you build a nail, 
There's only one way to build a nail and that's structurally sound. I'm really, really good at that. Learning all these new techniques and products is the learning curve, not how to build a nail. I know how to build a nail, but learning all the different techniques and products that are coming out, that's where I can take my knowledge of building the perfect nail and applying it with all these awesome products that are coming out. I'm gonna turn that one upside down a little bit. When you turn it upside down, it helps the product self-levels. This one's a little bit runnier, so it will self-level beautifully. So when you turn it upside down, it brings it into that natural arch that you'd wanna see when the nail's upright. So by doing that, oh, look at that. Trust me, that's perfect. Oh, I wanted to mention, one of my students just sent me an email. This is a really good email. They were perfecting as what they've learned. It's a little bit hot, so I'm just turning. You know what? He has a little, as the other lamp did too, the Kira Sky, which is I wanted to show you, but I forgot to charge it. That was my fault. They have these buttons now. There's a lower intensity, so you won't burn. And look at that. I'm in there and it's not burning. Kira Sky's lamp was very good for that too. But he emailed me and said that he's really coming along in his technique and stuff, but he's having a real issue with confidence. And that is so important. And I find this is a huge problem. I know a lot of technicians that are really good at what they do, but they do find the confidence issue is a problem. And it is tough. I get it. You're sitting across the table from a client and you're holding their hand for an hour or two. There's a very intimate relationship there. So when you're creating and building, you are worried whether they like it or not. And sometimes you never know until they return. And if they don't return, you think it's your work. So that confidence issue is a huge thing for us to get over. See how clear that is? I haven't got any bubbles. So confidence, what I can say about confidence is, confidence is earned client by client. And it starts with your friends and your family. Those are the, those are the people that are gonna be the most understanding you hope and and available and have the time to you know sit with you as you learn and doing your own nails too. And the more you do that, the more you'll build confidence for yourself. And you gotta remember you're you're gonna do a nail and when you know it's good, you gotta trust yourself to know that confident. And the more you do it, the more other people will see that and you'll attract the people that like what you do. There will be some people that won't like what you're doing, even though you're confident in it. That's okay. They're not the ones you're trying to please. First and foremost, the one you want to please is you. You want to rely on yourself for that. Once you know you're doing the job that you want to do, then other people will see it and then they'll want your nails. And that will build your confidence. So just give yourself some time. Okay, I'm gonna nuke this a full cure and I'm gonna clean this up and we're gonna sculpt them. So you just gotta remove all the stick. That's what gel has a little sticky layer. Don't forget to take that off. Just an alcohol cotton pad. And now I'm gonna file. Now they're so shiny, you could almost leave it the way it is but you want to make sure that it has no bumps and lumps and you want it to be absolutely shaped the way a nail should be shaped. That's where the sculpting comes in. So I'm just going to give it a nice little sculpt. I 
we're doing with a hand file because gel is very easy to sculpt with a hand file. When I do the long parts, I literally will hold the long part on my finger to brace it as I file, rather than leaving it out in the open, it can leave it a little bit, especially when you're filing the real base layer really thin to put all this stuff on top. Just hold it with your finger underneath, it just braces it. So the better you are at laying that gel layer down when you're sculpting it, the less filing you have to do. That's where your time can be picked up too, if you're worried about your time. If you get better at application, it just naturally makes the filing part easier and faster, and therefore you pick up your time. Now my shapes were already pretty much in there because I shaped them before we began. And then I laid all the product on top. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same with all of them. like to finish with a nice smooth file. Enough to grab onto the grip for the gel top coat. But smooth as in just making it a little bit smoother. So there's no bit sticking up during your gel top coat. So I'll just go once over all of the nails once I finish shaping them. And I'll kind of go underneath them too just to give it a nice smooth finish under there. And then I will take another lint free pad and then I will wipe away all the dust get into the cuticles too Ooh, that hurt my burn notice that I didn't even pay attention to my burn once I got into the design so it either went away <laughs> or I just didn't think about it okay get your favorite top coat and you can just Put a nice top coat on them. This is where the color will come to life. Right now it's a little bit dull, but watch this. You can really see those gears pop, eh? Well, a top coat always brings it oh, to life. Yeah. Sure does. Look at the, you can see the comparison. Beautiful. That makes it so rich. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. So excited, and I know cameraman would be loving to take these pictures. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So let's check out the reveal shots. <laughs> That was fun to do, I really enjoyed it. I think I'll post my um, wedding picture, how's that cameraman, our wedding picture on Instagram. I think I'm nail career education on Instagram, so you can follow me there if you'd like to see it. Also, I wanted to mention, some people ask me what's on my other hand. This is by a company called Nail Kimmy. It's a beautiful color called Vintage Rose goes on beautifully. 
And don't forget, confidence takes time. You'll get it. Just takes time. See you guys in the next video. Hey, hey.